Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm Office Blog Daz. Office Blog Caden. Here we are, the two of us. Getting her MIA today. It's a day off. She gets a day off. Oh, is it? Yeah, no one else does, just us. Just her. Yeah. Um, if Patreon's your thing, check out the link in the description below quickly. Loads of stuff on there. Three dollars a month starts that, and there's uh, absolutely loads and loads of exclusive stuff on there. So uh, get down there and join. Mm -hmm. um, U.S. Coast Guard raids. The U.S. Coast Guard raids a drug submarine, and then this happened. How do you? Um, how do you? How would you manage that submarine? Did, did, have you ever seen? Um, there's a there's a TV show called. Uh, oh, I can't remember. It's called where the guy buys a, a, a submarine from the Russian, like a Russian submarine, uh, and uses it for drug running from South America to North America. Really? Yeah. Like proper, like real stuff. Yeah, yeah. O Operation Odessa, it was called. Yeah. I'm quite yeah. excited to see this how it goes mm. down. Go for it. Get into it. Shit. Deep in our oceans hides a secret world. Thousands of illegal drug submarines, each carrying more than three tons of drugs, worth millions on the black market. The submarines are very well built and are hard to detect. But what happens when the US Coast Guard comes face to face with these criminals? The scale of this underworld operation is growing day by day. How are they caught? What is found inside these shady submarines? It shouldn't surprise you that there have been quite a number of instances where the US Coast Guard has intercepted huge drug trafficking operations. In fact, there are some pretty recent occurrences too. The event of September 2019 involving a submarine transporting illicit substances vividly underscored the critical importance of the US Coast Guard. The mad thing is, is they're using these all these like new techniques to get drugs around the world. I don't know whether it goes to from How South much America. money are they paying for this submarine? Oh, they, do you think how much money they're making, mate? Have yeah, you, I know, but yeah, that is You've seen you've seen like uh, Narcos and uh, you know the study on um, Pablo Escobar, people yeah. like that, and how much money they had. It was crazy amount, billions and billions, of billions and billions of dollar industry around the world. Yeah. But when you look at it, think about all the drugs that are hitting the streets around the world, everywhere. Someone's using, someone's got something going on to get it to there. get it there that they've not detected yet. You know, whether it's then you know ROVs like deep in the ocean, or whatever, better than submarines. You know, they're thinking of something. This this might be low level, although it's, there's a lot. Of Unless they're making it in the country, they've still got started somewhere, though, haven't they? But yeah, you know, opium's coming from Afghanistan and places like that. Yeah. But it depends where you've got to get it in places. Well, corruption plays a big part. Yeah. How that's why. It's, that's how much it's just let that's through. why it's very easy in like South yeah. America. Mm. Yeah. It's all corruption, isn't it? Yeah, probably. Mm. In a remarkable display of their capabilities, the U.S. Coast Guard intercepted and apprehended a submarine carrying a staggering 12,000 pounds of illicit drugs. This operation was a collaborative effort between the US Coast Guard, US Navy, and international partners. The interception took place in the Eastern Pacific Ocean, a known hotbed for drug trafficking activities. The Coast Guard cutter Monroe, equipped with advanced surveillance and detection systems, detected the presence of a self-propelled mini-submersible vessel, or SPSS, navigating suspiciously in the open waters. The crew of the Monroe, supported by a Coast Guard helicopter and a U.S. Navy aircraft, initiated a high-speed pursuit of the SPSS. Despite the evasive maneuvers employed by the smugglers, the Coast Guard's relentless pursuit eventually led to the successful interdiction of the vessel. Upon boarding the submarine, the Coast Guard personnel discovered an astonishing haul of narcotics, 12,000 pounds of cocaine, with an estimated street value of $165 million. <laughs> the seizure dealt a significant yeah. blow to drug trafficking organizations and disrupted their operations, preventing these dangerous substances from reaching our communities. The U.S. Attorney's Office in Tampa initiated legal proceedings against the four individuals who were apprehended. This isn't the only time the U.S. Coast Guard has been praised for their accomplishments. On June 18, 2019, the U.S. Coast Guard carried out a bold operation in the Eastern Pacific, successfully seizing yet another narco submarine laden with a whopping 17,000 pounds of cocaine. Even more. This entire operation was documented on video. As the hatch opened at the end of the one-minute video, 
a brief glimpse of a person inside the vessel became visible. Shit. The drugs confiscated during this operation were estimated to have a street value of $232 million. This particular operation was just one of 14 instances where drug smuggling vessels were intercepted off the coasts of Mexico, Central America, and South America by three Coast Guard cutters between May and July of that year. In total, during these three months, law enforcement authorities successfully confiscated 39,000 pounds of cocaine and 933 pounds of marijuana. Officials estimated the combined- What do you reckon they do with it after they catch it? After they catch someone with that much? Like, what do they do with it? With the, with the drugs? Yeah. It's uh, destroyed. But they're just like- Burn it. Burn it. Mm -hmm. ...street value of these seized narcotics to be approximately $569 million. It's worth mentioning that these criminals are prosecuted. In their testimonies, they claimed they were under immense pressure <laughs> and faced severe consequences if they did not comply with the demands <laughs> of the criminal the organizations. The, the, the cartels, known for their ruthless tactics and ability to instill fear, often use a combination of threats, violence, and financial incentives to compel individuals to participate in their illicit operations. The operators of narco submarines often come from vulnerable and marginalized mm. communities where economic opportunities may be limited. In some cases, their families may be held hostage or subjected to harm if they refuse to cooperate. While coercion may be a mitigating factor in some cases, it does not absolve individuals of their criminal involvement. But the question arises, how are these submarines actually tracked, spotted, and captured? While the specific details regarding how and where narco submarines are spotted and detected are generally kept confidential and classified for security purposes, authorities occasionally provide information on their detection methods to the public. This is done to raise awareness, showcase their efforts, and deter potential criminals. However, it is important to note that authorities carefully vet the information they release to ensure it doesn't compromise ongoing investigations and compromise the safety of those involved. By selectively sharing information, authorities aim to strike a balance between maintaining operational security and keeping the public informed about their efforts to combat drug trafficking. Before 2008, when a semi-submersible was intercepted at sea, the crew would often sink the vessel along with the illicit cargo, leaving no evidence of drug mm. trafficking. According to maritime law, the crew members were typically rescued and released without facing criminal charges. Seems unfair, doesn't it? To close this legal loophole, the U.S. introduced the Drug Trafficking Vessel Interdiction Act. This act made it a felony for individuals who knowingly or intentionally operated or boarded a self-propelled mini-submersible without nationality and who had either navigated or was navigating in international waters with the intent to evade detection. The penalty for such offenses I wonder how many of these there are, sort of like bombing around the Pacific and there. Well, whatever. she said before that there's thousands, isn't there? And they don't—they look quite like cheaply made. Yeah. So you don't like they're spending millions on making a submarine like that. You wouldn't have thought you'd get sub. caught out there, though, would you? Mm. In the middle well, of the Pacific Ocean, you're like, well, if I'm going to get caught anywhere, it's going to be on one of the on land. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The um, I don't know if they did, I heard a story ages ago. One of the, it was one of the programs they were talking about. And what they do is a lot of drug traffickers. What they do, they send like um like a, a target ahead of them. So what they'll do is, say for instance, you're on a plane, they'll get somebody who looks dead suspicious carrying loads of drugs. He's the one that gets caught and you walk through. Mm. But you've got loads as well, but you don't, you know, they're not suspecting you. you. You're the one that goes through. So they use like a decoy. I wonder if they do the same on there. So yeah. like a decoy sub goes out, they all chase him and then the other one comes the other way with like, you know, yeah, with, you know 24,000 pounds worth of uh, gear. Yeah. Yeah. This can result in a prison term of up to 20 years in the United States. In the realm of maritime law enforcement, the sighting of a narco submarine sets the stage for a high-stakes battle on the open seas. When the U.S. Coast Guard spots a potential narco submarine, they dispatch fast response boats and aircraft to intercept it. Using technologies like infrared cameras and sonar, the Coast Guard works to track the sub's movement underwater. If it appears a smuggling run is underway, they try to force the sub to the surface. The Coast Guard's goal is to stop the illegal cargo and apprehend those involved 
without using force if possible. With patience and skill, they may wait for the sub to eventually emerge on its own so its crew can be arrested and any contraband seized. But sometimes specialized boarding teams armed with courage and resolve leap on to these elusive vessels in daring operations, engaging in fierce struggles with drug traffickers. Victory is achieved when the narco submarine is captured, its criminal crew apprehended, and a significant blow dealt to the dark forces profiting from drug trafficking. After a narco submarine is captured by the United States, it is typically taken to a secure location for further processing and investigation. No. The specific location may vary depending on the circumstances, but it's often- I wouldn't trust that. Looks like someone's made that metal work at school. I wouldn't trust that at all. Like, no. I'm not getting in that going into the Pacific. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't, would you? No. You'd look at that and someone said, yeah, we're taking you on a, on a trip. Do you want to get, get in? You'd be <laughs> yeah. like, uh, where are we going? Yeah. Looks like someone I'd be more like... worried about the trip that they're taking them on, to be fair, with 24,000 pounds of cocaine in the bag. <laughs> Looks like an abandoned theme park. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, been shut for like 400 years. Yeah. A designated port or ever naval ever base. <laughs> When it arrives at the secure location, it undergoes a thorough examination and search by law enforcement and naval personnel. This process aims to gather evidence, locate any hidden compartments or contraband, and identify those responsible for operating the vessel. Additionally, forensic experts may collect fingerprints, DNA samples, and other relevant evidence from the narco sub to support ongoing investigations and potential legal proceedings. Ultimately, the fate of the narco submarine may vary, could be dismantled, destroyed, or preserved for training purposes or public display, depending on the specific circumstances and the policies of the law enforcement agencies involved. But a question arises yet, why narco submarines? Who invented these smart vessels? And are they expensive to make? Before we delve deep into the world of narco submarines, consider showing your appreciation and respect for our Navy sailors. How? by liking the video or leaving a blue heart in the comments, but also <laughs> by becoming a member of our channel. Just click the link in the description or head to our homepage and click on join. By doing so, you not only support this channel, but also honor the brave men and women of the Navy, and you'll gain a wealth of knowledge about the maritime world. Your support cool. is greatly appreciated. Mm. Thanks for that. Let's move on. Let's talk about the narco submarines. In the late 1980s, Colombian drug cartels faced detection challenges, prompting them to devise stealthier smuggling methods. By the early 1990s, this led to the advent of narco submarines, custom-built vessels designed for smuggling massive amounts of drugs. Crafted in hidden jungle sites with expertise from countries like Russia and Pakistan, these subs were equipped with advanced tech and operated by experienced crews. These narco subs are often modified from existing boats and are escorted by armed guards to ensure their safety of their valuable cargo. Despite their high construction cost, sometimes reaching $2 million, some are discarded after a single use, especially after delivering cargoes worth up to $232 million. It's a small percentage, isn't it? Yeah. To take, build that for $2 million, transport that for $232 million. Which, No brainer, isn't it? It's yeah. a tiny percentage. Yeah. In 2021 alone, 31 submarines were confiscated, showcasing the escalating drug trade's profitability. So, um, unless you get stopped and then you're losing 230 odd million. The, the amount that's getting through to the amount that's getting stopped is probably a small portion as well. Yeah. Then, like I say, some of them could be decoys. Then I'll go and lose lose 200 millions worth to get you know five billions within. Well, who are the dedicated men and women of the U.S. Coast Guard that are tirelessly working to combat the criminal use of narco subs? Let's take you through the workings of the mighty U.S. Coast Guard. The Coast Guard, founded in 1790 as a revenue cutter service, became the modern day Coast Guard in 1915 after merging with other maritime agencies. It's one of the U.S. military's smaller branches with around 41,500 active duty members, 7,800 reservists, and 8,300 civilian employees. Their operations span both the Atlantic and Pacific areas. Their fleet, a mix of vessels, aircraft, and helicopters, including cutters, patrol boats, icebreakers, and aircraft, dedicated to surveillance and search and rescue missions. The U.S. Coast Guard, USCG, is pivotal in keeping dangerous drugs away from U.S. shores. 
As part of the Department of Homeland Security, they battle against transnational organized crime networks in drug trafficking. Their strategy? Intercept drug shipments as close to their South American origins and as far from U.S. shores, leveraging intelligence to target efforts where drugs are most vulnerable at sea. The USCG collaborates internationally, forming maritime counter-drug agreements and sponsoring initiatives like the multilateral maritime counter-drug summits. They've also partnered with the U.S. Southern Command through the Technical Assistance Field Team, or TAFT, to bolster Caribbean maritime forces. Highlighting their commitment, in 2014 alone, the USCG disrupted 164 drug attempts, seizing 93 vessels, and confiscating large amounts of narcotics. These operations showcase the critical role of the USCG. Without them, drug trafficking would soar and U.S. maritime safety and security would be at risk. Regardless, just like the U.S. Navy, the U.S. Coast Guard is always striving to improve their ability to counter any challenges that come its way. New advancements are routine. Speaking of new advancements, currently the primary methods used by U.S. agents to detect narco subs is through towed sonar arrays. These arrays consist of long cables with underwater microphones that are dragged behind a ship. While they are effective in listening for potential targets, they can only be utilized in relatively deep water and have a limited range for sound detection. In some instances, advanced underwater robots known as bluefins can also be employed to listen for targets. However, these robots have their own limitations. Although they are more agile than <coughs> surface ships, they can only detect targets within a few miles and face challenges in communicating their findings to human operators while submerged. Now that you have a good idea of these drug submarines and how they're actually captured, do you think there are better ways to detect them? Should the U.S. Navy intervene a lot more? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If, if you enjoyed this video, please show your support by... I'll say, but it's, yeah. it goes to show how much, um, how much of the, the, I mean, I don't know what the value is. Can the submarine not fully go under? Does it have to have a little bit on top? That's no, Sub submarine normally goes uh, fully submersed. Yeah. Um, but that's a semi-sub, yeah. which is semi-submersed. Um, and uh, I don't know if it's for, you know, anything to do with oxygen or anything like that it goes into the, uh, into the submarine. I don't know what the reasons are behind it. But uh, you can imagine they've got miles more advanced as, the, as months go on and time goes on, years go on, the advancement of how to get drugs from A to B. Hey, this is just a learning point for them guys, isn't mm, it? I know, I know, that's it. <laughs> comes down, you, you see, I don't know, I've not seen anything with a, with a more advanced method than, I don't know, for mass, especially for mass submarine. importation. Even submarines. so, like, where are they going to? Like, where are they just going to park up on the side? Are they going to end up going into a river that's discreet? No, they go into, uh, they, 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 I mean, they, the rivers will be too shallow probably. Then. Well, I mean, didn't we see one before? Parked up in like in the middle of a room. Yeah, that was like where it was being built. Uh, yeah, they were being built in like jungles and stuff like this. They said, didn't yeah. they? Remote, remote, remote yeah. areas. Um, but I guess when these, I mean, they're quite small and they're quite narrow. So it depends on what, I don't know what kind of like spec they need to go into certain waters. But when you're traveling across oceans in them, the danger that comes with it is just incredible. But I don't know, I've heard, I've heard stories where they drop stuff out of planes and boats come pick them up. In remote areas, it gets them back to land. Yeah. So I don't know if these are met, like you know, uh, alongside someone pulls alongside it, ship it over to another ship, and uh, and brought on brought on shore. It's crazy what goes into it. Isn't it? it does, but it's, it's very very lucrative. It's massive money that you see there. That's why lots of people do it. That's it. It's a so risk and reward. Face the consequences. Face the consequence that comes <laughs> with it. Yeah, exactly. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Don't forget like and subscribe. Yeah. See you in the next one. Cheers. Cheers.